Hi, my name is Alexis Quinn. Um, I'm the author of a book called Unbroken. I'm an autistic person and this talk is about trauma, the source of some challenging behaviour and how to help. So more and more research shows a link between a wider range of, of things that can happen in life being interpreted as traumatic for autistic people. And then autistic people, as a result of those experiences, experiencing post-traumatic stress. So what we know is that in autistic lives, you know, lots of things can be thought of as traumatic, being ostracized, okay, bullied, um, and difficulty in processing and understanding what we might perceive as crises. So transitions perhaps between classes, primary, secondary school, secondary school, and you know, adult life, divorce um, and bereavement. And the impact of these events can be devastating, especially when you fear the interaction of others, because past experience has shown that actually people and interactions can be harmful. You know, if I go and speak to so-and-so, they might bully me. Um, and so I avoid them. And because I avoid them, people think I'm weird. So it's really difficult, isn't it, to sort of seek comfort in people when these things happen, because there's always that fear that interaction might actually accrue more traumatic experience. Now, for me, these traumas, both in the past and now, have resulted in a real sort of singular focus that I just can't move from. Now, if I was to use medical language, this might be called cognitive inflexibility and rigidity of thought. Now, my experience is just that I just get really stuck and a thought just goes round and round. I get really stuck on a thought. and I just can't move from it. Now, perhaps this is a function of my monotropic autistic mind. So my efforts to kind of manage things that have happened in the past result in two states. So the first one is continually comparing, you know, my current experiencing and my current experience to what I want to happen, right? Desired experiencing. And the second one is constantly analyzing my thinking to try and make sense of and solve my perceived problems. Now, these repeated thoughts and ideas usually center around traumatic life events. So for me, that's bereavement, that's interpersonal sort of bullying, ostracizing trauma and restraint, of course. And then I'm trying to process, right, the difficult emotions that are associated with those things. And so I get stuck and I get so unable to detach from those two types of thoughts that I actually lose my ability to see those things as a thought. And instead, I see them as instructions, right, or commands. So this is really important. So I'm losing my sense of I right? My sense of self. And so often that's confused with psychosis or even OCD. Now to relieve this and find myself again, I have engaged in, you know, dangerous sensory seeking behavior, okay, that put myself and others at risk. And I have friends that, dis that, that, that describe this same internal process, right? These same cognitive processes and that for them, it's resulted in them not eating for maybe days, weeks, months or years. Others I know have felt the need to attack people, bang their heads repeatedly on walls, um, scratch their skin off and so on. The, ex the, the expressions of this same process are really endless. Now, as I try to manage in a different way, right, and to disengage from that stuckness, OK, and to regain my sense of I, I might become hyper aroused again. And as people respond to my challenging behavior, right, my sensory seeking that I'm, that I'm unable to disengage from, I might experience more trauma, right, from the interaction, especially if it involves a harsh word, right, frustration from people, people, you know, those around us, you know, or even the use of, of restrictive practices and more negative thoughts and feelings are, are, are generated. Now, these don't have to be actual interactions or actual experiences. It might be something that I'm perceiving myself and it becomes part of that sort of stuckness cycle. So you're kind of relying on others to keep sort of grounding your experience and your understanding because you become unaware of what's real and what's not real.
Now, I believe this stuckness to be related, right, to my increased preference for predictability. I'm quite intolerant of not knowing what's going on, okay, of ambiguity. Um, and so my experiences of, of relational trauma and of death and of restraint are all inherently characterized by unpredictability, aren't they? Right, by a lack of control. So that kind of causes me to want to keep things the same, to control my internal world, my thoughts, feelings, my interactions. But seeking to understand that which is not understandable and thinking about the causes and consequences of it and my reactions are actually causing those intrusive memories to come back up again, aren't they? And then I have that, you know, that furthers that sort of singular focus on the trauma. So it creates a kind of re-experiencing in itself as well as maintaining the re-experiencing after it's developed. So what we see here is the bi-directional association and mutual maintenance between re-experiencing and singular focus. And, and certainly for me, you know, especially when I'm not sure what's real, you know, and what's not real. And when I get into that stuckness, you know, and, and I get frustrated with myself, I experience a, you know, a burnout and a compassion for myself. I experience a burnout in relationships with others and a trust in my ability to, to be reasonable and responsible um, in relationships. So for those supporting the traumatized and the autis you know, autistic traumatized people, the question is how to respect people's monotropic minds and to support their trauma. And unfortunately, I don't have an answer you know, that goes beyond the, the sort of clues that are readily available in trauma informed curriculums, like, you know, providing safety, you know, choice, collaboration, trustworthiness, opportunities. I mean, beyond that, I hope that maybe in this video, it might help, you know, generate some conversation, some discussion, some understanding of the processes and internal mechanisms you know, that, that, that we might at least respect some of the causes and experiences and after effects, you know, when people are exhibiting challenging behaviour and showing that kind of stuckness, you know, that we might behave in more sort of compassionate and loving ways. Thanks for listening.